this is what we came out here for. Look at that giant! There it is. There it goes. Alright, look at that bass. Look at that thing. A brute. Look at that tank. Beautiful nine incher. Nice bonus yellow perch. Look at that thing. That's a tank. Big and beautiful. That's a tank. Look at them tanks. And then another tank. All right, so this time we're below the Mississippi River Spillway going after spawning bluegills. A lot of small ones, but if you put in the time, as you see in this video, you will get a whole bunch of nice ones. The nice ones are in the mix, of course, as well. We're fishing rocks and boulders, fishing off the wall of the spillway, jigging a tiny little jig with red worm, just right above the bottom, just like you're fishing for walleyes. And it's only a couple feet because the water is, came up, but not too high. And it's just enough couple feet where them bluegills come right tight to against that wall. Anyway, enjoy the video of us going after spawning bluegills underneath, underneath the Mississippi River Spillway. Well, I'm trying to beat the crowd. Look at that tank. Beautiful nine incher. Just a beautiful nine incher right there. Look at that tank. Right underneath the spillway here. Trying to beat that crowd before they show up on these spawning bluegills. Inches right there. Beautiful nine. Got a little slow there, but there's another one. Immediately, nice bonus yellow perch. Look at that thing. This spot is known for the yellow perch. Another nice one. I guess my bluegill fishing turned into perch fishing. We got three of them suckers now. Well, all right, a nice yellow perch in the mix with the spawning bluegills. That's it for this morning. Our nicest bluegill right there. I think this is, a, I picked the right one. That's our nicest yellow perch. Uh, we're gonna be leaving here for a while. Go do something else. We'll be back in the afternoon. We need, we got seven in total of perch and bluegills, three perch, and then the rest are bluegills. Spawning bluegills. It's going down. Alright, anyway, see you later for the afternoon to see what happens in the afternoon. So before I start, we're in the afternoon. We, get, we had seven this morning, so we need eight more. Just jigging off the wall in this slack water right below the spillway for the bluegills with that tiny little jig. The thing about this spot is the big ones are in the mix, but most of the time you're catching a lot of small ones. But it's uh, after four o'clock. In the afternoon, a little red worm. It's one in the afternoon. We just need seven more to max out. That's that's a nice eater. Probably almost nine, eight and a half, probably. Ow. About 20, 30 minutes already. A little scratched up that little guy is, but we caught that one nice one. The rest of them been so small slow and then I pull up this tank I'll have to measure that one that's a tank that might be a throwback it might be 10 inches look at that slow 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 a lot of small ones and then boom giant wow look at that bluegill nice difference from this big one to that smaller one. Okay. 
Look at that view. Where is he? That ain't him. We want the other one. Big one. Big and beautiful. Let's see here. Uh, we got eight and a half. Well, I thought it was way bigger than that. All right. 5.30 and we just got another just a goddamn unit. Probably probably nine inches. Look at that unit. Gotta get out. If you can, get out and try to find some spawning bluegills. Wow. It, probably eight inches or so. That would be an eater, but we're catching some real nice ones this afternoon. Why not uh, just enjoy it and throw that one back and try to get some bigger ones well a lot of people are starting to show up so I'm going to talk about what I'm using here there's my reel my rod and then the line I'm using is 6 pound suffix elite fishing line with a tiny little tiny little white jig head that's all no sinker just that tiny little jig head, just jigging it right off for this thing. 45 in the afternoon, another tank. It's really slow, but the small ones seem to quit biting, and now we're catching the nicer ones here. But it's slow. It was, at least the small ones got you something to catch, you know, while the big ones are coming around or something, you know what I'm saying? But there's another keeper, that's four. Getting to six o'clock. That would maybe make an eater, but looking for the bigger ones. Got four, that means we need four more. Clock, and now we're catching small ones after small ones. The small ones showed up. Look at them tanks. And then another tank. I caught three of them. This is my third, so I need one more left. Sun's going down, it's almost hitting the trees. One more and I maxed out. It took me all, all morning and afternoon. I missed the noon hour because I was doing something else. How long is it going to take me to get my last keeper? I added a tiny, tiny, the smallest little sinker I could find. Just to give it a tiny bit more weight. Because it got a little windy. And then the line's going way over here. And you can talk really hard. I just put a tiny, tiny, just another tiny little sinker on there. Just give it a little bit more weight. And that's all you need. Because you want it light so the bluegills like it. Too heavy to, they can feel it. And Almost 7 o'clock. And there's my last one. On that white jig. That's a tank. Like I said, it took us a long time. But... We maxed out. As you can see, just just nice, beautiful tanks. Look at these ones. Our biggest one was nine and a half, is what our biggest one was. Just beautiful. Spawning bluegills. All right, we're out.